you know, from the depths of despair to a national championship, John, you couldn't have written a better script for this team in terms of where they came from, the adjustments the coaches made, just to stay in the course and having faith in their guys. And To me, it's an amazing life lesson, almost in, in the power of team. Amazing chemistry, and, and just uh, improbable in, in many ways from if you go back a month. It, clearly what happened in 2011 got everyone's attention, uh, but I think it was that we appeared to be a, a really good team at the end, and, uh, and people like to be reminded that it's about team as, as much as anything else. The 2011 Virginia lacrosse team had lost their best defenseman to injury, their two most dynamic midfielders to suspension, and lost four of five games near the end of the regular season. Seemingly out of any playoff contention, the team pulled together to engineer one of the most talked about championship runs the sport has ever seen. And that is it. Virginia has advanced to play on the final day. This year's team, returning most of its top players, was ranked number one coming into this season. There's a reason why teams don't often repeat. It's hard to do, and we've talked about that very openly. We've not tried to run away from the fact that we're the defending national champion. We're proud of that fact. And most of my peers would like to have that problem of how, how to figure it out. But at the same time, we needed to recognize that this was not going to be an easy task. team is ranked number one in the country with a 10-1 record, beating top programs like Syracuse, Cornell, Maryland, and UNC, while falling to Hopkins in an OT thriller. They come out in a zombie on man down. Uh, it's, like, uh, it's like making a play at the end of a game, where they're coming out with that kind of pressure like that. You got to stand and, and face it down and then kick it okay uh, but lobbing and back backing up and throwing off our heels is not the way to do it you're looking for the easy way there step into it throw a hard ball and just uh, make a play put the ball in the back of the net when the uh, when the opportunity presents itself right here fellas sophs and juniors you're going with coach van seniors and freshmen you're going with coach walker you got five minutes of ground balls let's get to it one two three three let's go bust it up here last five minutes as a coach you're standing there in january looking out over the schedule and you're not seeing a lot of easy wins you know frankly uh doesn't make my life any easier. At the same time, uh, it's what we sell to young men when they're thinking about coming to the University of Virginia, that you're gonna play the best week in and week out. When we're trying to get the kids' attention in September, when it's time to kind of get back to work, everybody understands that we need to be prepared. Now, the Cavaliers are preparing for battle with fierce ACC rival Duke. The Blue Devils have been dominant, winning 11 of the last 12 meetings between the two teams. The last 12 games that we've played, not like four games, not like five games, it's like 12 games, we've only won one of them. Yeah, these guys just had our numbers. We have a saying of no big games, but Duke definitely does carry a little bit more weight. Attackman Steel Stanwick is the reigning Tawaratan Trophy winner and arguably the best player in the country. Yeah. Oh, he's out, Stanwick fires, and scores! Stanwick's stature as the game's preeminent ball handler comes with a price, attracting aggressive slides and violent checks from opposing defenses. He might have taken one on the hip. On the extended hip. left, getting pushed down. He is really struggling. The beatings have somewhat limited his ability to practice, and the great attackman is starting to show some wear and tear in his fourth and final season. Has joined the conference. Hey guys, it's Vince at Virginia. Got Coach here. How are you guys doing this morning? So we're ready to get going if you guys uh, have questions for Coach. All right, Coach, you mentioned throughout the year that, uh, you know, the beating steel takes. Through your career, do you think this is a more significant target on a player that you've seen or had in memory? He so much is the offensive leader of our team that you understand that teams are game planning for him and he's a little bit of a target perhaps. Uh, any attackman would would have a hard time holding up there and I think in his case he's such the focus of so much attention we worry about him a little bit physically certainly something that we're keeping an eye on for coach Starja the thought of sidelining his top player is one he'll have to consider 
team trainer Rebecca Vazo has been keeping a close watch on Stanwick's sore right thumb. He came in today and I made a third split now. So this split now completely blocks this joint. At this point, it's just it's just tender. The thumb completely overprotected. Every time something's touching, as long as the pain decreases, then he'll continue to get better. The way it's reacted since Saturday, he thinks by Friday he'll be fine. Thank you. It's early in the week and the outlook seems optimistic. With good players, experienced players, they learn to play with injuries. It, it comes with the territory. I do worry about his health because everybody's targeting him. They're trying to be as physical as they can with him. And he's got you know, to work extra hard to get himself healthy. Double team, dismantled, taken down. But guess what? Dexterity. Tucker, now to Stanwyck, a high shot, and he scores. Got creamed after the play. And Virginia leads by five goals. When you carry the ball a lot against you know, some of the talented you know, defenders, you're going to get beat up. And that's just the way it is. And I've kind of gotten used to it. You know, Our training staff does a great job of getting me ready to go. And, I try not to think about it as much as much as possible. It'll be impossible to talk Steele into not playing. So we're just going to keep an eye on Steele. We got to hold you out, Six. No way. Not this one. Yeah, I think you got look a little gimpy. How's Steele walking? Like an old man. Nothing's changed. No. By nature, goalies are resilient. They must be to survive. After enduring his role as a backup for three long years, goalie Rob Fortunato now stands as the man between the pipes for the Cavaliers. For me, this is my first season starting. I've been waiting for this opportunity for more than just three and a half years now. I've been waiting for this my entire life. And I, uh, you know, I had some success coming out of high school. I would, had never been benched before. Being second and third string, you know, it, it was very difficult. Fortunato's been one of the big surprises nationally, you know, to be in the top 10 in save percentage. Reporters have asked me, did you ever think about quitting the team or, or leaving the team for some time? And, you know, no, never, actually. I just knew once I got my shot and opportunity that I would be ready and prepared and help my team and, and put them in a position to win a game. Now, not many guys sit on Virginia's bench for three years and then play as seniors. Typically, if you don't play by the time late in your sophomore year, you know, you're, you're uh, dusting off the bench for, for your entire career. Work hard, pay your dues, it's gonna pay off, you know. To be honest, it hardly ever does at this level, you know, in a program like this where there are good players coming in every year. Out front, Worley locks it low. Fortunato with his first save. Fortunato produces his fifth save of the game. Save made by Rob Fortunato. One of the goals coming into this season was you know, improving and uh, getting better each and every day, you know, trying to be as consistent as possible. And give him all the credit in the world for not only hanging in there, but improving, working to improve over those first three years. Right handed shot and a stick save made by Fortunato. We didn't know what was going to happen, you know. How is he going to play against Carolina? How is he going to play against Duke? I'm not sure. You know, we've never been in this situation before. Fortunato plucks it upper right corner. And another stick save by Fortunato. The fact that Rob Fortunato steps in when he's considered a question mark and does that, and he says, no, I'm not a question mark, I'm a senior. Easily picked by Rob Fortunato, who has put up a wall. In every way, you know, he has surpassed our expectations. Inside, Creighton makes the catch, another save by Fortunato. I think other people have sort of latched on to Rob Fortunato's story and been able to tell young players that, look, you may not get that gratification right off the bat, but hang in there, do the right thing. Uh, there's a chance uh, that, that your turn is going to come. Hey, fellas, they're, uh, they're half-field defense stuff. You know, they lose the face-off, they're coming after you aggressively. You know, two poles up on that, number nine facing, they get another pole on the wing. We'll go over on the field how we want to line up. But this would be a look that we may have as a defender coming up the field. You just got to attack the field here instead of hesitating. In lacrosse, the team who controls the faceoffs often dictates tempo. The Virginia coaching staff is especially focused on winning this battle. Duke possesses some strong long stick midfielders, particularly CJ Costabile who can create havoc for opponents during face-offs. CJ Costabile can win face-offs, first of all. But where he's most dangerous is he'll strip you. So, so you can't feel like a face-off win is complete until it's possessed in the offensive end. They got big, fast, strong poles that are going to be relentless all over the field and kind of hunting people down. And runs away from Costabile. Costabile continues to hound him. See how wide they get extended. But if you run and guard your stick, you may have a clear path right to the cake. What's his guy do? He's going to double the ball. 
he'll stalk you, he'll get the ball on the carpet, and then once he has the ball, he's like a midfielder. Uh, he, the green light is always on, he can go to the goal himself. It's about not giving up those transition goals, which, is, which have killed us in the past. And this is when they're at their best. Loose balls in the middle of the field, very good ground ball team, and they're looking up the field as soon as they make the, the scoop. That's a one face off for Carolina, but a goal for Duke. Why don't we figure to at least touch that today in the beginning of that? So that, at the end of that, let's put those people on the field and let's have a let's play a one face off going forward and backward. And, uh, uh, you know, keeping them under control in the middle of the field, you know. The, Your pole starts running out of the game, their pole's running right to the ball. Exactly. And we've shown them that cardboard diagram, you know. Uh, it was pretty helpful uh, last year. I mean, we didn't do a lot of things very well against them last year, but that was one thing we did, so. All right. And we did, a, we did a good job with this uh, last year. Substituting off the face-off, you know, maintaining possession of the ball. Yeah. Primarily the wings and the face-off guys and the Ds, so you can see this. If we are facing off, Clem's that wing guy. We got uh, Casa and Mick there. Shocker over here, whoever the shorty is. When we, if we win the ball going back. If we can win the face-off going back is to, to recognize that you are seven on six in your defensive half of the field, and so you do have an extra man and there's not a need for, for panic. And in the other direction, doing about three-quarter speed here, Ryan. Today we spent a lot of time going through the choreography of winning a face-off in a particular direction and how we want people to react to that under those different circumstances. All you middies, no, you start running down the wing of these things, they're gonna be chasing you with the poles. You don't want to stop and roll back. Keep running. One more time. Here we go. Let's get the ball cleared. It really comes down to being patient and, and making the right plays. Remaining calm in those circumstances will really help to uh, alleviate that pressure that they're going to be putting on. Short week, we're giving you a lot of information. Let's be better at processing this and make it happen than, than Duke is. Right here, let's go. Oh, let's get on top of this. Here we go. We've got a great day for it. One, two, three. Two. Two. The equipment has been unreal. I think I have like four or five pairs of gloves right now. For every game, I like to have a, a new pair of fresh socks. Face masks and jerseys, and I think we're getting two new jerseys or something like that coming up. Four pairs of cleats over the year. I remember when we first got Cascade helmets, and then the next year we had like two of them, and now we've got three and like a practice helmet. You just get so much of it, it's like Christmas. This is our lacrosse aisle. We store everything from socks to shirts, rain gear, sweats, you know, everything that these guys get throughout the course of the year. You know, if a guy needs a new shaft, needs a new head, we go ahead and take care of it for him. Over here is where we keep all of our footwear. You know, we have two low tops, two mids, kind of to be able to fit whatever preference these guys come in and need. You know, we have guys that'll wear a low in high school and come in and want to try a mid or so. We carry a, quite a few, you know, guys will go through three, four pair of cleats in a season from the fall through the spring. It's one of the real special things about working at a place like this where you are given all the means necessary to, to be successful. From media relations, athletic training, sports medicine, you know, academic advising, the, the weight room, it allows you to do the pieces of coaching that are, are most important. You get, and I think that's been a dramatic change. The normal fan is they don't see all the things that go on behind the scenes. It, it definitely does help contribute to our success. Everyone has a hand in this and their work goes so appreciated by all of us. It just builds up that view of kind of like a family. They always are there when we need them. This is Virginia lacrosse. You're big time, like it's there. I kind of feel like this is, this is how it should be. With everything that we have, we truly are lucky. There's not many schools in the country that can compete with us in, in that aspect. We got uh, Matt Lovejoy. We'll open up the questions for Mr. Lovejoy. Is the rivalry with Duke any bigger than it is with other schools within the ACC? Duke kind of has a, uh, a special place in all of, uh, in all of us. They're always hard-fought battles, physical games. Duke is, is a little bit different. Virginia's players and coaching staff are eager to put an end to Duke's dominance. But first, they will have to answer the question, how do you stop one of the sport's fastest attackmen in Jordan Wolf? The job of covering Wolf falls largely to senior defender Matt Lovejoy, whose attention to detail and preparation have become legendary. 
There's a certain urgency in the way he prepares himself on both a daily basis and for each of these games. You've never seen a guy prepare himself for a game like Matt Lovejoy does. Talk to pretty much anybody, I'm pretty into my preparation. You know, comes and watches extra film all the time. But Matthew, if we can set the edge here and get him going to his left hand, if he gets to his right, he's dangerous. Coming to his left, am I not flying out to it quite as fast? He's gonna be tough to even slide too. We gotta make sure we're challenging that shot, try to put put him out wide. The Wolf is, is one of the fastest guys that we'll probably see on the attack. Wolf gets a step. Wolf keeps coming hard, shoots, scores! Shot in the goal! Who needs a shot clock when you're at a Wolf? He is really fast. He'll probably be the fastest guy I've ever covered. Our coaching staff does a great job breaking down the film so I can just watch all these individual clips. Wolf's 31 uh, back at X here. Likes the uh, you know quick restarts from the X. He likes this sprint dodge here. You can see this is an off end line, but he's coming hard for his right. Just a quick turn as soon as he hits GLE. He kind of likes that fade away. I think Lovejoy's really got to sit on his right hand for some lefty where Wolf becomes just, uh, just an assist guy. When he's a lefty, he doesn't like to turn the corner quite as much. And that works to my strength because I'm a lefty, so I'll have my stick out there. And hopefully, I can match feet with him. I look forward to this. I want attackmen that want to beat me because I want to shut him down. As a team defender, he's on a very short list of the best I've ever had. I'm really proud of what we've done to get us to right here. The schedule that we play, the burdens that we have carried through into the start of the season and who we are and, and what we've done. Uh, we have played hard throughout and gotten better. Let's sweep through the conference. Let's finish this thing the, the way that we want to on the same kind of track that we've been on the last couple of weeks, that we've been on since 2011 ended. That season ended, you know, all of a sudden you become the defending champions. We talked about it right away. We talked about sort of embracing that role and, and looking forward to getting back and playing. And what a challenge this was going to be. Uh, we've stood up to that, you know, we've stood up to that. We've gotten a lot of lead from our older guys, but everybody has contributed to what we're doing. Let's finish this thing tomorrow the, the way that we think that we're capable of. Let's get all over these guys. Always, baby. Always a lot to be thankful for. Let's kick some butt tomorrow. One, two, three. Team. Next for Lovejoy and Steel Stanwick in the Cavs, a date with Duke from Clockner Stadium. Duke has won 11 of the last 12. Lights on. Going to be an exciting game, and you got to think Virginia will be a slight favorite in that contest. We're playing smart. We're playing hard. We're playing together. Hey, have some fun doing this, okay? All that work gets us to this point right here. Let's take care of our business. Let's go right now. Let's go. One, two, three. Yeah. Virginia in the home orange, Duke in the road blue, Benacasa against Costabile at the X. We are underway, number one against number seven. Costabile wins it to himself and still... As expected, Jordan Wolf went to work from behind the net. Although Lovejoy was able to maintain solid position, the zippy attackman was able to create just enough space to execute one of his patented jump shots. Crossfield pass finding Ryan Tucker, frees the left hand, and Wigweiser makes the stick save. Shoot his right, he loses his man, Stanwick. It's a pipe. They're doing a good job. He's getting our chances on offense. All of his saves have been around his feet. It was the first time Virginia failed to score in a quarter all season. Can't come up with it. 
Costabile and Dupree all over him. He needs some help. Costabile comes up with a turn. He finds Wolf, but Fortunato with the jump stop. Eight saves for Fortunato. Lovejoy turns to his right, stays in back. Fortunato was brilliant, and the momentum seemed to begin to shift. Handing off to Colin Briggs. Gets the screen from White. Briggs looks it back to White. A face dodge, a split dodge. A high to high shot. He buried it. Cavs on the board. It is Matt White making it one to one. Then the Duke offense struck like lightning. Yeah, Dion on the doorstep, but he takes the shot instead. Rose quickly gets the lead back to Duke. For a second, Costabile took a lumberjack check at it, rolling towards the Virginia defensive end. Three-quarter arm, high to high release. That ball is moving. He's got Manley as a trailer. He goes to Wolf. Wolf will let him fly, and he has his second of the ball game. But Virginia caught a break just before halftime. into the back of the net. At the break, Virginia had to feel lucky to be down by only two goals. Rob Fortunato was excellent, keeping the Cavs in the game. Give it up, Fort. Yeah, Fort. Keep going, Fort. No, you, you, you'll, you'll be at X, going out to your left. Steel go from left, back behind. We're getting challenged here, offense. Got to step up now. Gotta step up and get ready to make some plays, right here. Right. Anticipate that early. Open your mouth. Talk to each other. Coach Starja had to be concerned. His team had not played particularly well, and his goalie could only keep the door shut for so long. Hey, Tom! Two hands on your stick, bend your back! Let's do the little things we talk about one at a time! One at a time! Get it back one at a time! One at a time is right! Get your head up! Let's make a play! You! Show the way! One, two, three! Team. Let's go, boys! Parks and Costabile. Parks! Effective, but again, it's not a face-off one until you clear it against C.J. Costabile. Back foot floats to the Colin Briggs. Catch and crank, fires low. Wigreiser made the save. Without the ball, Virginia's attack was often rendered helpless. As he had done all season long, Fortunato was doing all he could to keep his team in the game. But suddenly, Duke's offense exploded. Lost the slide. Oh, he hit him in. Whoa, wow, Dion with some flair. Coming around, Dion again. My goodness, they lead 6-2. to two. And now on the left wing, Trapuca feeding the crease. Dion wide open. Ducks under a check and scores. Josh Dion with a hat trick. And the Blue Devils lead 7-2. to two. Dion again, make it four in a row. C.J. Costable was every bit the menace Virginia feared winning 10 of 19 draws and picking up a game-high nine ground balls. Manley, he's gonna take it! Wolf finds Dupree, he's gonna let it fly! Everybody's getting in the act for the Blue Devils! Virginia could not recover, succumbing to Duke once again in a lopsided affair. Blows it by Fortunato! 20 seconds left, and it's scored! It is all Duke tonight in Charlottesville. This was unacceptable tonight for us, uh, you know, across the board. We're, we're poised to go forward. This doesn't change our goals or anything else. Uh, you know, uh, if we needed a little bit more of an edge in, in practice on Monday, we, we, we just got it. Tune in tomorrow night to see how the Cavaliers will rebound and prepare for the playoffs. Seconds of another win over Virginia. Make it 12 out of the last 13. It's a long season, and we know that. And, you know, not going to point any fingers. We just got to get better. And at this point last year, we were we weren't doing too well either last year. So we have plenty of time to turn around. We don't need to freak out or anything. We just need to just need to play better. Falling to Duke was certainly a setback, but the players can't waste time licking their wounds. It's time to turn their attention to the next opponent in the ACC tournament, North Carolina. Everybody understands. And what people remember in a lacrosse season happens in the month of May. But along the way, we don't want to waste a week as we evolve as a team.
back and had a excited practice on Monday. Uh, kind of got after it a little bit, uh, and I expected that we would. Yeah, so the only way to gain that confidence back, uh, you just got to have a good week of practice. We've done it before, and now you just got to bounce back and you know and have the best effort on uh, Friday. You know, I've got a group of guys that. Uh, you know, we can take a little bit more mature approach to how we're doing things. They've been very conscientious so far. We're, we're working at it. We're in it for the long haul. And uh, the quality of this season is going to be determined further down the road. In the meantime, we just got to work hard and continue to get better as we get there. You know, th th these are races that are won by the tortoise, frankly. And uh, and so we're, we're trying to move slowly, keep going in a positive direction as, as we build up and, and go on. A lot of it is dictated by the demeanor of the older guys. You know, they're the guys that have the most invested. They've been around. They have the deepest understanding of what it takes to be successful. So my job, frankly, right now is to make sure we get this kind of reorganized and focused on the effort that's going to be required against Carolina. The loss to Duke was one of the most lopsided in the history of Klockner Stadium a landmark on the UVA campus that has seen its fair share of special moments. It's the perfect place to watch a game. It opened my first year here, so this is 20 years now with Klockner, and I would still say it's probably the finest facility in the country for viewing men's across. The fans are on the hill. Uh, you got the best field surface in the game, and, and to me, this is a special place. When we come down here, TV-wise, we know we're going to be entertained. And the stadium has seen its fair share of entertainment. If these walls could talk, it would speak of historic games and some of the best lacrosse the country has seen. I've been growing up imagining it, and there's nothing like playing at Klockner. It's a pretty picturesque setting when you walk up. Once you start seeing those towers and those columns and, and the national championship flags waving in the air, you definitely uh, get a little butterflies in your stomach. It really is a tremendous atmosphere and, and something that I look forward to each and every time we get to play there. On a big game day, there's always a lot of people uh, tailgating, and kids will come give you high fives, which is cool. The stands are filled, the hill's filled, the fans are right on top of the field, the highlights on the big screen. I think that is just the type of atmosphere that draws so many recruits here. You feel the, the bleachers shaking. It's an electric atmosphere. There's nothing better looking at college sports than that field. You know, we can go play in some of these big stadiums. It just doesn't compare. You know, it's, it's one of a kind. Playing at home in Charlottesville for the next matchup in the ACC tournament seemed to be the perfect remedy for all that ailed UVA in its loss to Duke. Emory with time and room. Steel Stanwick would reach an incredible milestone. Oh, he puts it in. That's the record. Steel Stanwick is Virginia's all-time leader in career points, and we're tied at Klockner. If uh, he happens to be the all-time leading scorer and one of the best players that's ever played at the University of Virginia, that's only a small part of who he is and, and why he's such a neat kid and uh, why it's such a joy to, to get to know him. Pass gets through. The quick stick by Briggs. But in a very tightly contested game, the Cavaliers would fall short yet again. North Carolina comes into Klockner Stadium and gets its first win over Virginia since 2004. Virginia loses two straight, and they will not be attending the ACC championship. Wait, wait, we're struggling a little bit right now. Look at the hell of a lot of heart. It's the way to go. It's the way to go. It's the way to go. That down ass is there. The guy's up. The guy's up. Let's go. There's something eerily familiar about the position in which the former number one Cavaliers now find themselves. A year ago, on a rainy night at Duke for the ACC tournament, the Virginia team got caught in a season-ending tailspin. 19 to 10, Duke hammers Virginia. Probably the low point of the season. I think, uh, you know, a lot of guys just maybe weren't too optimistic with the way the season was going. That was definitely the rock bottom for me in the season. Um, just riding back from Durham, that long ride, you're just like, wow, that was pretty bad. After that ominous night game against Duke, the team had to dig deep and make big changes. 
when we made the changes on offense and defense as we headed into the Penn game in the last game of our regular season, uh, there, was a, there was a little fear in the locker room. After that, it was just like, okay, we're in this together. We're in the same position. We've lost five games. We have nothing to lose. With distractions out of the way, a brighter outlook took hold. And as the NCAA tournament began, the team could feel the momentum building. The confidence started coming back, starting to mesh and come together and celebrating more after goals and just being having a better time playing. Out at that point, I was like, okay, I think you know we're ready to play just about anybody. Next stop, Baltimore. When we just carried that momentum, just took off from there, never slowed down. Cooper fires to the right hand. Virginia has advanced to play on the final day. You know, I think it just built, and guys were getting more comfortable in roles that they weren't in earlier. Just playing really unselfish to cross, just able to get really better as a team as uh, each game went on. Even for student athletes with championship rings, campus transportation can be a daunting task. But certain members of the team have engineered a noteworthy alternative. Dirty Birds. Dirty Birds, uh, great group of guys, great group of scooters. We started a gang called Devil's Angels, and then a new gang arrived, and it was called uh, the Dirty Birds. And, you know, I didn't feel comfortable joining that gang because, you know, I had allegiance, but eventually, I guess, I, you know, I became a Dirty Bird. I talked to Ryan Benincasa, I was like, hey, man, like, what do you think about me getting the Dirty Birds? He's like, oh, you got to earn it, man. One of the first guys to, to hold down the scooter game was Wyatt Melzer. For some reason, uh, Wyatt Melzer was always saying, that, oh, yeah, we're riding dirty today. We're riding dirty to practice. So he gets a lot of respect on, on that baby blue scooter. And then all of us take our old lacrosse helmets and uh, take out the face mask. Um, you can definitely throw some tricks out there. Uh, I've seen some wheelies. Yeah, we can do a little wheelie, but uh, I don't think we're riding out the wheelie too much down uh, Rugby Road. I'm glad I don't know a lot about the scooters, but it's, it's kind of funny. You get the little motorcycle mob. It's funny and it's fun, so, you know, we, we love it. It's like one more way to just have everyone together and just to build chemistry and everything in just like a really fun way. The sport of lacrosse has seen growth in so many ways including the size of its athletes, although size is not imperative to success. In lacrosse, strength is seen as crucial. The sport is, is becoming more and more physical every year. I always talk of it in terms of we're always looking for quickness and explosiveness. And uh, you know, what I've come to learn is that uh, stronger means quicker, faster, more explosive. You know, weight training and our strength conditioning is nothing more than an extension of practice. You know, I've gotten a lot stronger since I've been here. And uh, even just this season in general, I think it's just really important to have your legs underneath you. Although midseason lifts are considered light, the team is focused on staying strong. Uh, the guy who dominates the, the weight room is definitely uh, Shaka Lapierre. I told myself I was never going to call him Shocker because I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to give in to everyone else calling him Shocker. He, I think he had hit a kid in football, like peewee football, and he hit him so hard that he had like shocked him. Uh, well, Lapi is an animal. When he's loading up the bar and you see him keep loading up the bar, it's really impressive. You know, he's, he's one of the biggest guys in the program, and he's absolutely one of the hardest workers. The guy who does somewhat of the dirty work, the stuff that doesn't get into the newspaper, but uh, it has everything to do with winning. You know, there's an element of toughness there uh, that, you know, you just want to reflect who you are as a team. Shock is one of the most competitive people I know. You know that he is going to give it all on every single play. 
He's a force in the middle of the field, and I love watching him play. He's, he's an absolute animal. I love this kid. I get jacked up in the booth when he makes plays. If Virginia lost Chris Lafayette, did they be in a world of trouble? Being a deep eddy, primarily face-off wing, kind of transitioning, one-man clear, as Quinn likes to call it, whatever it is. But uh, I think that's kind of my role on the team. But you see how you know you, you help contribute to winning a championship, or you help contribute to winning the next game. It's definitely a rewarding feeling. Chris Lafayette just blasted a hole in the net. So he does a fantastic job, and um, you know he has a lot to do with, with our success. As the winningest D1 coach of all time, Starge's success on the field is well known. Besides being a master motivator and a great tactician of the game, a much less publicized facet of Starja is his impact off the field. Tom Starja is the most unique coach currently in the game because of his perspective beyond the game. I'm in the office about 7.30 every day. I'll check all my emails, 9 o'clock or so. I try to get a workout in every morning. It's a feeble attempt to, uh, to stay in shape, uh, but I can sort of begin to focus a little bit on getting organized for practice, collect my thoughts and all. I want to be organized with a theme that, so that I can talk to the players in a meaningful way. It's hard to say meaningful things every day to kids. You, you hear the, the speeches he, he gives. He just represents, in my mind, leadership. It, it is about the journey, about us together as a group, about the quality of people we have here and not taking anything for granted. Let's not give away a day. Let, let, let's be great today. Well, he's been a mentor first, and he cares more about you as a man than he does as a lacrosse player. He's probably you know, more of a father figure than any other coach I've ever had. People have, have speculated that he's going to be a, an athletic director or an administrator. I mean, I've been hearing that for eight, ten years, you know, and, and it still hasn't happened because the guy loves to coach. We all know how successful he is as a coach and, and you know, as like a, a teacher of the game, but you can't say enough about what kind of person he is off the field. Above anything else, it's not about winning or losing for him. It's about how you treat people at, at the end of the day and just the way he, he carries himself off the field. I think it goes a long way. He and, and Coach Mann and, and Coach Walker are, are the constants that make this program great. I've been so fortunate, so blessed to have uh, married someone who loves what I do for a living. You know, the, the work piece requires so much of my time uh, that um, uh, you know, I just involve my family whenever I can. And some psychologists might say this is problematic. Uh, I've never done a good job of separating work from home. Uh, the same principles that I would reinforce with my children at home are the ones that uh, I talk to the team about and vice versa. It's my life, it's who I am, coaching, family, things like that. You know, Maggie and Emma are always, you know, coming down to practice when they can and kind of gives you a perspective of, you know, keeping in mind what's, what's really important in life and, and family is uh, at the utmost importance. Dom and Chrissy Starja have four children. Two of them are his twin daughters, Maggie and Emma, who are now in their mid-twenties and have special needs. You know, I've got, uh, the two girls at home that we're going to have to take care of, you know, for the rest of our lives, and um, that's a great blessing for, for me. Maggie and Emma spend much of their time at Innisfree Village, a residential life-sharing community for adults with intellectual disabilities. Although the idea of moving them to Innisfree is hard to absorb, it seems more and more like the right choice. Um, how do we anticipate what, that, what the timing or or how, that, how that's going to work. Maggie and Emma can be involved in Innisfree now. I think we have a, an advantage for you living in Charlottesville that we don't have with most families. People out there would like us to consider moving them out there sooner rather than later because they would like the community to get a little younger and the girls have such, you know, kind of positive personalities that they would like those personalities in the community. I, I'm not quite ready to give them up at home. Uh, someone was asking me not that long, you know, how I deal with the stress of my job, and, and the simple answer is Maggie and Emma. You know, they're, they're waiting at the door every night when I come home. They don't care what the score of the game was. They're curious about practice, but it hardly ever is about results, and, and so they had just helped me keep some balance. They're just always there for me. With so much experience and wisdom to offer, it is interesting to note that Starja often allows his seniors to impart their own two cents. 
in the beginning, I thought to myself, if I can get these guys to, to tell a good story on Thursday, I don't have to think of a story to tell myself. He came, he came back ready, came back determined. Uh, the positive energy brings to practice contributes to the quality of our life every single day. The last word of the day goes to white. We really need that the players look forward to telling their story, you know, uh, to, to, to the underclassmen and to the rest of the guys. In hopes of writing a meaningful last word, for the past four years, I've always tried to remember things I thought would be beneficial for my last word. Things such as Coach Starge's inspirational quotes. One quote in particular that I've always held close to me is one I heard from Coach Starge before I even stepped foot on ground. Most kids who make a difference in this lacrosse program are the ones who are the most resilient. Every kid has succeeded a great amount thus far in their lives. However, it is the ones who learn how to bounce back from adversity that will make a difference in the program. Their careers will not be defined by how they handle a good practice or a good game. Their careers will be defined, however, by how they react from a bad practice, bad test, or a bad game. Standing here today, I can tell you how much that quote has defined my experience here at Virginia. One of the main things I've realized over my four years at UVA is being a member of the lacrosse team, above all else, is an incredible privilege. It is a privilege to walk in the locker room every day. It is a privilege to jog down the hill to practice every day. It's a privilege to put on that uniform and walk on the clock and before games. And it is a privilege to say for the rest of your life that I was a member of the Virginia lacrosse team. For me, I have simply one message. Enjoy the journey. I know we hear the same good amount from Coach Starge during practice and before games, but I want to reiterate to you younger guys how important it is to enjoy the journey here at UVA. As always, stay hungry, stay humble, and that's the last word. <laughs> Right here, fellas, let's go. Build on that. Here we go. One, two, three. Team. YOLO. Man up, guys. You're in the basketball locker. Do we work hard? And obviously, I do think that we work hard. I would tell you that most everybody works hard. You know, what you're always trying to do is find a way to work smart and make the most of the day and get your players prepared and excited about playing on, uh, on Saturdays. I do feel like it's almost their responsibility to be emotionally ready to play on game day. I mean, I, I, know, I know I've got something to do with, with that. This is sort of their season, and we expect them to be cresting as the week goes on and ready to play on, on Saturdays. With two consecutive losses, first to arch nemesis Duke, and then to North Carolina in the ACC tournament, the team travels to Denver, Colorado to face the Penn Quakers. Virginia's win against Penn last season helped turn things around, and they're hoping for the same result this year. This only happens if everybody does this together. We need the power of everybody in the room. So let's go. Let's get after this. One, two, three, two. White has the ball. Toes close to the back of the crease. White serving. Dunks it on top. Bocklet. Open and score. Right. Surak feeds it left pipe. Stanwick wide open. Steele has two. And Virginia leads by that margin. Man, Stanwick at X. Slide them early on him. Stanwick on top. Oh, another goal for Virginia. And just when it looked like it was going to finally be an easy night for the Cavaliers, the tide began to turn. He's produced four straight saves. Hey, hit the freaking cage. Let's go. And Virginia and Penn are tied at four with Duswale out front, Savage. A split dodge, frees the right hand, rips it up the left corner. Four straight goals, Penn leads. A somber locker room. Frustration boils over, even for the most wizened of coaches. Gotta play with that determination. Wishing and hoping that something happens, rather than making it happen. Either lead or get out of the way. And that means everybody. Let's go. Let's get up. Hey, let's man, get hey, 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 let's go. Let's go. Follow me. I'll give me this. Let's, let's go. Do right this. Come on. Let's go. One, two, three. Two. Let's go. Let's play, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
mark. Cockerton delivers, and Virginia leads by two. Using the double team with its goalkeeper. Now Stanwick on the near side alley. Stanwick feeds the crease. Man left alone. Wide open. Why not? It's Chris Buck with the send in the dagger. They had to work for it, but Virginia gets its first ever win west of the Mississippi. Everybody pitches in in the second half and gets a piece of that right there. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes the hard wins are the best wins of all. That's the way to go. You dug down on a day when you weren't happy, you have your best stuff, and you, uh, and, you, and you did what you needed to do. Ready, one, two, three. Virginia, run, run, run. I mean, we're always, always happy to win. Uh, you know, we haven't won in a couple weeks, so it's great to win. Um, you know, there wasn't any magic in the air for us today. It just wasn't, you know, we kind of had to bend our back and do the work like Coach says. And me, I always felt like this is time to get back to, you know, the one-on-ones, the ground balls, all the, all the stuff that, you know, you don't have to worry about personnel at all. So you can really just focus on yourself and get yourself ready for the first round. I give them a lot of credit for the way that they played. And, and uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of teams' best shots, and, and we've, had a good, we've had a good season. And like Steele was alluding to, uh, the bye comes at a good time for us, chance for us to regroup and, and heal up a little bit and, and prepare, for, uh, prepare for the NCAAs. The regular season has been a difficult test, but a valuable one. Revealing to the players what they're capable of, good and bad. Now it's time to sharpen the focus and muster every ounce of energy for the brutal month that lies ahead. The players will have to lean on each other if they want to replicate the glory of the previous year. The playoffs are about resilience, the ability to mentally and physically subdue your opponent before he can do the same to you. Younger players will have to learn from those that have done it before them and collectively listen for the wisdom of their mentors. He's got to attack the field here instead of hesitating. Lacrosse is the oldest sport on the continent, but there is a timelessness to it. Rituals and techniques that are part of every game, every season, everywhere. To succeed in this sport, you have to build on what you've learned, to take ownership in your game and trust the experience that you've earned, sometimes through defeat. And after all that sweat and sacrifice, a team might find itself advancing through the postseason with that special energy of a team that has closed ranks and is committed to an outcome. Are we willing to sacrifice? What kind of commitments are you willing to make? What are you willing to give up for the greater good? When we have kids that are willing to do those kind of things, then usually we're on our way to a special season. In the month of May, the players will find out how resilient they really are for the 2012 Virginia lacrosse team, another test is looming.